Hello, I'm Graham Elwood, and welcome to the Church of Batman. Today I want to go over an article that was on thehill.com, uh, written by John Updike, uh, and it was posted on uh, December 27th. John Updike is also a friend of mine, and he runs openprimaries.org, which uh, is something I mentioned in an earlier video. Um, it's a great way to get involved. Go to openprimaries.org. So the... But they, they're not giving me a paid endorsement. I just like that organization. They've hired me to shoot some commercials for them, but this is not, they're not paying me to do this. I believe in it. Um, and the title of his article is, Can the Democratic Party Become a Voice for Democracy? <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Um, so John Updike writes, the Democratic National Committee will elect a new chair in February. It is an important race to watch and not just for Democrats. This race is an early indicator of how well the Democratic Party can respond to the populist anger with status quo politics. The American people rebuked both the Democratic and Republican Party establishments in 2016. But for now, the Republican Party is under less pressure to reorganize in response. They won, and by a strange quirk of American politics, the GOP establishment was simultaneously rejected and victorious. That's the thing we all have to remember. Trump came through and blew up the Republican Party. I mean, Jeb Bush was just crushed, and Cruz and Rubio, I mean, these were Republican Party insiders, and Trump blew it up. I mean, those first primary debates, he was you know, he, he was calling the Republicans on all their insanity. I mean, he's I'm not defending Trump and all this crazy xenophobic rhetoric, but we have to remember that. And now the Republicans, many of whom, like Mitt Romney, who were so vocally against Trump, are now lining up to kiss his ass. Like, really? Lindsey Graham is the only guy in that party that has, like, half a ball to stand up to Trump? Unbelievable. But... The reality is the Republicans have won and the Democratic Party kind of blew it, as I've talked about in other videos. And so what, what can the Democratic Party do? Um, so going back to the article, uh, congressional Republicans are planning to introduce legislation to federal term limits in 2017 as a nod to the politics is rigged outcry from the American people in 2016. That's interesting. Senator Bernie Sanders, who is playing a vocal role in the DNC chair election, spent the last months of the presidential primary describing in detail how the system is rigged. He lambasted closed primaries that excluded independents, the superdelegate system, which is complete super bullshit, and the tilted playing field. But since endorsing Hillary Clinton, he has put less emphasis on the need for a structural overhaul. Some Democrats believe that reconnecting with the American people requires a new look at issues of process and trust. Yeah, I mean, the Democratic Party, as I've said, they're not the party of liberal progressives. They're not a populist party. They should be. If they were, and as, as I've said in other videos, they should be behind. The Republicans are on board with climate change denying. They're, they've made that very clear. They're bought and paid for by the Koch brothers and ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil is the biggest corporation on the face of the earth, or at least one of, if not the. Democrats should be fighting so hard about climate change and using that, this, this idea, they've like, it's almost like the Democratic Party has bought into the fact, like Republicans and conservatives have sold this notion, and it's, it's not true, that environmentalism gets in the way of business. Ah, oh, the hippies are regulating everything and we can't make a profit. It's complete bullshit. I did an earlier video um, showing, it was in Bloomberg of all places, not the Sierra Club or something like that, about how renewable energy, specifically wind and solar, is making a profit. That's one of the ways you could do it. You gotta give people jobs. If people aren't working, they're gonna blame the government, whether it's right or wrong. And, and as he goes into it, the, the problem is it's not between conservatives and Republicans. It's about the elites crushing all of the rest of us. Um, so Virginia delegate Sam Rasol recently made statewide news after resigning as treasurer of the Democratic caucus and declaring that the Democratic Party wasn't going far enough to build trust with the American people. 
He recently told uh, John Updike, <clears throat> quote, I love our platform. That's not the problem. When we say we are the party of the people, but then we defend a political system that excludes millions of people from voting in primaries, why should people trust us? Th that's an amazing point. They're the party of the people, but where our primary system is completely rigged, that's not the, <clears throat> everything they say. It's like it's it's the the Democrats just they're a bumper sticker. They just wave a, a rainbow flag and they're pro-choice and they're for gay marriage and they go see and then they don't actually put in other things to help regular people. Um, and then they they don't have trust. Hillary, her, she kept kind of going. She couldn't find her footing. Like she was just so, so stuck in being a professional politician that she couldn't connect with anybody. And I think it killed her. And even with that, she still got more votes than Trump. So it's like, 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 like Sam Rasool says, the platform isn't the problem. More people voted basically for the platform or to stop Trump, whatever you want to call it. But the platform, the ideas, more people, more people want liberal progressive ideas. It's just never implemented by the goddamn Democratic Party. <laughs> They're just another Goldman Sachs division. Um, so I think, going back to Sam Rasool, he says, I think people have lost trust with both parties, but the lack of trust is a bigger issue for Democrats because the gap between our rhetoric and our actions is wider. Nobody will believe us on the issues if we don't start telling the truth about our broken political process. That's absolutely true. The Republicans are very clear. They At least you know where they stand. I mean, they... Their, their rhetoric about working class people is, is kind of bullshit because they're all about corporate stuff. But their social issues, they don't, they don't waffle on that. They don't waver on that. We're against gay marriage. We're against, you know, uh, we don't believe in climate change. We, you know, the, 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 the transgender bathroom thing, that's the thing. They're, very, they're, gonna, they're not, they're clear on that and they're going to vote accordingly. And the Democrats need to say the system's broken. And one of the ways you got to do that is you got to get rid of people like Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, Harry Reid, Senator of the Curve. The two leading candidates for DNC chair, Representative Keith Ellison and Labor Secretary Tom Perez, share a, quote, put the grassroots first, unquote, approach to party building at at a rally held at the American Federation of Teachers headquarters in D.C. last week, Ellison stressed the importance of being active in all 50 states and not just in the weeks before the election. Well, that's a great, I mean, you know, Hillary, obviously there's a bunch of states she didn't campaign in. She just thought she had the blue wall. If you go talk to people in the reddest of states, if I was running for president, I would go to the reddest of states. I would go to the reddest of counties and say, I actually have a plan. I have a solution. I have a jobs program. Obama didn't even have like a jobs program. He never thought like, this is my sweeping job reform. Ah. Um, Ellison stressed the importance of being active in all 50 states. Uh, Perez is emphasizing a similar retooling, but he seems to have support of more traditional D.C. players. Both want to reposition the grassroots slash net roots within the Democratic Party hierarchy, but that is the easy part. The harder task for Perez and Ellison will be to insist that the party be honest about the state of our broken politics and the party's role in perpetuating it. Yeah, man. Gotta look in the mirror. Gotta look in the mirror. The whole reason I'm doing this YouTube channel is because I wasn't paying enough attention to politics. I was not reading articles like this. I would sort of thumb through them. Oh, my buddy wrote this. That's cool. Now I'm dissecting it and <laughs> talking about it with you guys. Um, they must find a way to tear up the political playbook that emphasizes partisan advantage at all costs, stand up for the voting rights of all citizens, and fight to create a, a level electoral playing field. Yeah, man, voter suppression. Boy, that's the that's the Republican stock and trade, and the Democrats just kind of, oh, we shouldn't let that happen. But secretly, they like a small electorate as well. A small electorate's easier to manipulate. Um, Ellison has, has uh, started exploring the issue even at 
At his event at AFT headquarters, he questioned why progressive issues like raising the minimum wage and legalizing marijuana are winning on the ballot even as Republican candidates run the table. That's such a great point. That's such a great point. If, if Trump had this Republican conservative mandate, then why was marijuana passed in a bunch of states? Why is everyone out there wanting $15 an hour? Like, and this is where, and this is an opportunity because Trump is going to, he's going to lose supporters because he's bringing in the guy from, uh, you know, used to run Carl's Jr. that's adamantly opposed to $15 an hour, you know, and, 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 and the Democrats should be banging the drum on that saying 15 and $15 an hour will raise everybody. Anyone who's like, well, I already make. 15 an hour. So now my I'm going to make less. No, you'll make more. We need to increase all of the wages. It'll help everybody. And also to the corporate people, if people are making more money, they have more money to buy stuff. Ha. <laughs> ah. Um uh all right. So back to the uh, article. The answer, in my opinion, is that the Democrats need to build a political party that the American people trust to look out for their interests. And that starts by telling the truth about our broken um, political process and pushing the ra for radical changes in how our democracy functions. Admit it. The system's broken. Right? You just won the, 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 the um, popular vote and lost the electoral. You have to say it's broken then. The last two times you lost the White House were under that. So you got to say it's broken. It's broken. And admit your own faults too. Get rid of the super delicate bullshit. Um, the American people are distressed by the decline in our world standing, by the growing gap between rich and poor, and by the lack of a level playing field in politics. A recent poll by pollster Pat Cadell showed that 67% of Americans believe that the real struggle in our country is not between left and right, but between the ruling political elites and the rest of the country. 67%. Like, that's it. That's it. That's what I've been talking about in, on so many other videos about the, 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 there's no, there's no, isn't a two party system. There's a corporate party. And look what happened. So look, so, so many like working class people went to Trump and then so many like disillusioned, a lot of the millennials went to Bernie. Those two people showed you <clears throat> what America is frustrated about. Trump obviously riled people up with a, with a sphere and a, and a, you know, the Muslims are going to get you and the Mexicans are rapists. Like that was his whole crazy message. Bernie had a very positive message. And Hillary had, I'm with her. That was her campaign. Obama ran on hope and change. And Shears was just like, I, you know, I'm with her. Like, it wasn't enough. And people didn't believe her. Why they believe Trump is a whole other thing. Like, he's clearly a liar and a lunatic. But they're going for something. They just need some sort of different change. <clears throat> the Democrats have such an opportunity here. Because there's going to be a backlash to Trump. There's going to be a big backlash. And if they don't get their shit together, they're going to miss this opportunity. Um, American democracy needs to be overhauled to address the gap between insiders and outsiders. All voters should be eligible to vote in all elections, including primaries. This is the thing. The Democrats, they, they have blocked some open primary stuff. You know, Debbie Wasserman Schultz has said, I, I don't want to open primaries. If the Democrats had half a brain, and they, they should know that an inclusive democracy actually benefits their liberal progressive platform, and they should be going, hey, working class people, diversity is not a bad thing. It helps you out. You know, the environment, we can all make money saving it. They should be doing that. Instead, they just act like another corporation. Ah. <sighs> So districts should be drawn fairly, not to serve party interests, state legislators, Congress, and the Federal Election Commission should not be controlled by party caucuses and special interests. Did you know the Federal Election Commission, the two Republicans and Democrats basically control it? They, the two parties dictate what the election is? Oh, God. Hmm. 
The Democratic Party has an opportunity to become a voice for democracy. That means building a more inclusive political process. It may also mean giving up some short-term privileges, but the, the, but by dedicating itself to rebuilding our democracy, the Democratic Party has a real chance to reverse its fortune and help our country move forward in the process. I, I firmly believe the percentage of like right-wing, you know, Nazi Trump supporters isn't as big as the amount of people that support it. Now, there, it's a scary thing, and I've talked about that before, that the racism, it's scary, and it looks like Germany in the early 30s. That's a scary thing, and I'm not trying to, to minimize that, and it bothers me, oh, a couple of guys did the Nazi salute in a, in a hotel near the White House. It's not that big of a deal. No, it is a very, very big deal, and it's very scary, but I think a lot of, again, as I've talked about in other videos, all of those districts that voted for Obama in 08 and 12 that then went for Trump, I think the people in those districts are not like in the Klan. I think they're just frustrated and they might realize, oh man, I made a mistake in voting for Trump. But that's where the Democratic Party needs to go to those people and say, look man, it's okay. Like, trust us. Don't get so wrapped up in the social issues. You know, don't let the Republicans miss, you know, trick you into being scared about Muslims and stuff like that. We have a better platform for everybody. It will benefit you in the Rust Belt. It will benefit you in the rural America. And it will benefit, you know, big cities. I mean, technology can help anybody anywhere. You don't have to have a college degree. Tech can help the farmer. It can help, you know... All of these things, and the Democratic Party should be talking about democracy. It should be saying, let's include everybody, because the Republican platform is all about exclusion. Their whole platform is exclusion. And and these people want to be, in, and the Democrats excluded, like, the working class people. And so they went, okay, we're going to go with this wingnut. We're going to go with crazy, tiny hand Trumpy and his band, merry band of Nazi billionaires. <laughs> It's a great article. Read it. Uh, it's in thehill.com, and it was written by John Updike on uh, December 27th. My name is Graham Elwood. Click the like button. Subscribe. This is important. If you like these and you want to get more, the more people that like and subscribe to these videos, the more videos I can do. Right now, I'm trying to do about two a day, but I could get up to four or five or more the more people that subscribe to this. So share it on social media. It's all right there below. Thank you for watching The Church of Batman. My name is Graham Elwood. Make Gotham great again.